So the next study is from the Applied Physiology, Nutrition, and Metabolism, uh, 2018 by Lee and others. So basically what they did after fatiguing exercise for the ipsilateral index finger, so ipsilateral means same side, fatigue was detected in the untrained contralateral index finger and in the untrained contralateral biceps brachii. So contralateral means opposite, ipsilateral means same side. So they did exercises for, let's say, the right hand, one a, a, a finger on the right hand. They showed effects, not only, the, they showed fatigue, not only in this side, they showed fatigue in this side. So my left biceps brachii, was fatigued. And what was more fatigued was that opposite finger. Let me show you, uh, let me tell you why this is a huge breakthrough for me. The fatigue in the contralateral index finger was greater than the fatigue in the contralateral biceps brachii. It seems that non-local and therefore central nervous system fatigue is more pronounced directly corresponding contralateral muscles than in other muscles of the same limb for basically an unknown reason. So, okay. Essentially what that means is you're doing a you're doing a single leg squat, all right? Let's say we're training the quads and the glutes and we're doing a single leg squat, right leg. You get done with that set. We know that okay, that right leg is going to be tired and we know we've always known that there's some global fatigue right? So global fatigue is just overall body fatigue. You're just kind of a little bit tired, right? So now you get into that left side and yes, you might feel a little bit more tired because that nervous system is drained. But what this study is showing, it's not just global, it's also local fatigue in that left leg. So basically what we're doing is fatiguing a certain neural pathway, so that neural pathway that is required to do a single leg squat and, and activate those, those, uh, those quads and those glutes, that same neural pathway is being trained on the left side. And so when we work it on the right side, we fatigue that neural pathway. And so basically that's why probably intuitively you guys have felt this. You get done with like a heavy set or, or, or a single leg exercise that's really hard. Sometimes you got to put those weights down and take a second before you go into that next side. So they said, the study says, it's unclear why there was greater non-local fatigue in the corresponding muscle of the contralateral limb. Non-local fatigue is likely due to central nervous system, CNS, fatigue. And it is feasible that corresponding contralateral muscles either share a neural pathway to enable, basically, basically to enable synchronized limb coordination. While CNS fatigue does seem to have a global component, it may also have a localized component that affects those muscles that share neural pathways. So for me, there's two main takeaways. One, when we're doing unilateral exercises, you got to train the non-dominant limb first. So most of us have one leg that's stronger than the other. That's human nature. My right leg is stronger weight room wise than my left leg. So I need to train my left leg first because I know there's not only global fatigue, there's also local fatigue. So that if I train my right leg first and that's my good leg already, I might be able to hit an easy 12 reps. Now I get to that left leg, which is already weaker and now experiencing global and local fatigue from the central nervous system. Uh-oh, now I'm only gonna hit eight. Now I'm only gonna hit six, right? So uh, train that non-dominant limb first and then maybe with that right, you're that much stronger to where you can still even it out and hit the same amount of reps. The other thing, and this is at this point experimental, I haven't done this enough, but I think I will start trying it out and I, I would encourage you guys, maybe you trainers, uh, to, to, to work with this because maybe it makes more sense Let's say that we have a unilateral lower body exercise and a unilateral upper body exercise in the same session. So we got a rear foot elevated split squat. Later on in the session, we have a single arm cable press. It might make sense to pair those together and train one side at a time. Like why not? It's the same total amount of time. So instead of going rear foot elevated, right leg and then into left leg, knowing that on our right leg, we fatigue these neural pathways that's then gonna affect 
the performance on that left leg, why not go right leg and then step into the cable machine and do a single arm press right arm? Because yes, on the single arm press, we have our global fatigue, but that's minor. We don't have the same local fatigue because it doesn't share the same neural pathway. So I like to do alternating sets, not typical supersets where you jump one to the other, but hey, get done with your rear foot elevated. Let me take 30 or 45 seconds and then get into that uh, cable press and then take 30, 45 seconds and then get back into the rear foot elevated. So basically, if we're going for quality reps, right? If we're going for endurance and pushing through, this may be a little different, but if we're going for quality reps, we're looking for strength, we're looking for explosion, we might want to consider doing that. So train your right leg, train your uh, right arm, go back, finish your three sets, and now we go in, okay, left leg, rear foot elevated, left arm press for three sets. So now you get around that excess local uh, fatigue. So that's kind of, I think, that intuitively, that seems like it makes a lot of sense to get the most out of our reps. And again, I don't like to, I don't like to act like things are fact until I've done enough studies and I've done my own research. Uh, so this is something that I'm going to start playing around with. Uh, but sometimes you got to throw out ideas to get people to try it out and see if their performance is increasing. Oh, and also this is actually, this is another takeaway, but if you're injured on one side, and this has actually been uh, reported in research long before uh, this idea, uh, basically we get gains in the contralateral limb. So this is something that we've known for a long time. So let's say my right leg is hurt and I can't train my right leg. I can train my left leg and I actually get strength benefits in that right leg. There is just nervous system benefits. So we actually get stronger just by training one side. So this is something that you can keep in mind. If you're injured, you could still train that other side and maintain or, or, or improve that strength in that other, and you probably won't improve, but you could at least maintain some of the benefits or not decrease as much as you normally would. Uh, so I actually, one of my worst injuries, uh, my right ankle, I just shattered the ligaments in my right ankle. I was playing three on three with Darrell Revis. Yes, that Darrell Revis, the best, one of the best corners of all time. So this is, I was an intern, um, at a sports training facility in Phoenix, and he was one of the clients. So I started training him. I had a bunch of guys like Max Scherzer, baseball player, um, Darrell Revis. This was like one of my early experiences before I was even really a trainer. So I kind of got close with Darrell. He, he had seen like, this is when I first started Instagram. I was showing him some videos and he's like, oh man, you hoop like that? We got to go play because he played in, in high school. And him and his other NFL buddies, they're all competitive in basketball. They would go play all the time. And so one day they brought me out. So I went and I played with them. We're playing three on three. is me versus Darrell and a bunch of his NFL friends. And I had two of his NFL friends on my team. We start playing. First of all, this is a side note. Darrell Revis is maybe the best defender as far as like hard to shift. He might be the best defender I've ever played against. And that includes NBA players. He sees things so fast because that's his job as a corner. Um, but man, he you cannot cross this dude. He's so fast laterally, so strong. Uh, and, and he would just see things a step ahead. But anyways, I couldn't get past him, but I, I hit a couple shots. And then I figured, hmm, he doesn't have the highest basketball IQ. So I'd start calling for screens. So I'd start working with the pick and roll because they didn't know how to operate through a pick and roll. So now I'm getting buckets. I'm dropping dimes. These guys are football players. They can't just out physical you. You got to know the game. So we get to game point. I go off the pick and roll and I'm driving. And I don't know if it's Darrell or I don't know if it's one of the other football players, but I'm going up for a layup and this is game point. These guys are competitive. They're not about to just lose. Somebody wraps me up from behind takes me down and it was at an awkward time where my foot was turned and I came down all of their body weight on a turned ankle and just shattered my ankle. My ligaments were just shattered. Got up. I, I thought it was one of those things that I could walk off. I started trying to walk, couldn't put pressure on it. Anyways, it put me out for over a year. 
And then when I came back, I had other issues, plantar fasciitis that stemmed from it. I had, I was out, I probably hard training. I was out for like three years and keep in mind, this is right after I transformed my vertical to the mid forties. So like I worked my butt off to get to this point. I got to the mid forties and then this happened. Never got my bounce back. Well, I'm still around 40 and I've cre crept up to around 42, but I've never been mid forties, 45, 46, 47. Uh, ever since then. So anyways, the reason why I told you that is I didn't know this at the time, but I should have been training the other leg. So I messed up that right leg. I should have kept training that left leg, especially because my left leg was weaker already. So if you're, if you hurt your stronger side, you should absolutely be in the weight room crushing. You should be pushing hard, trying to get that, that other side stronger because then when you come back, you might actually be more balanced, right? And you didn't lose as much strength on that injured side. Now, the only time that I would caution against doing that is if you're hurt on your weaker leg, right? So like if my left leg was hurt and that's already the side that I was weaker on, when I go uh, crush in the weight room with my right leg, it's going to keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. I'm going to keep creating a bigger imbalance. So that's something where you want to be cautious and maybe you do want to keep training that right leg, but keep it more minimal um, and find other ways to stay active, training upper body, training core, whatever. Uh, but again, I, I do think that you should continue training even when you've injured a leg uh, because studies have shown over and over again, you do get those contralateral benefits.